Hello, everyone, and we are the Python automation team. We are Jimmy, Will, and myself, Zach. Uh, we decided during our second semester of practicum that we wanted to work on a Python script to automate some part of the localization workflow. And we kind of put together a simple script that I'll cover in just a moment. Uh, but first, let me go over the agenda for today's presentation. So first, I'm going to be talking about the uh, overview of the script, what it does. It's a really simple script, uh, so we're actually mostly going to be talking about uh, sort of the tools and useful things that we encountered along the way so that uh, maybe we can pass these on so people can use them in the future. And then I'll hand it off to Will, who will talk about his, uh, uh, the pathlib function and what, what we encountered with that. Then I'll cover the copy anything function that we defined and how we implemented this script on the command line. And then finally, Jimmy will cover the beautiful soup uh, library that we encountered and T Kinter. Uh, and then we'll discuss basically what's next, what possible uh, scripts or solutions you can come up with in the future that we're hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to pass on to you. So basically our Python script does three main things. It gets strings from documents, uh, primarily HTML documents as we programmed it. It creates a source document for those strings to be stored in so that it's just ready for translation. So it has a list of strings that are already nicely laid out so that they can be handed off to a cat tool. And then finally, it creates a JavaScript file for, um, we use the 24 ways localization solution, which if any, for first years, if any of you have taken website localization with Max, you'll be very familiar with this. But you could really do this for any localization solution or any automated solution that you can think of. We just chose 24 ways for the sake of simplicity and showcasing its power. Uh, so now I'm going to uh, talk briefly about a fairly recent and useful library or package uh, in Python called Pathlib. It essentially lets you use uh, folder paths and manipulate them inside your program as objects. And in a very early version of our script, and part of, uh, I guess, an inspiration came from a program that I, or a script that I wrote that takes in files and analyzes them uh, using Pathlib. And it's a very uh, efficient way to handle folder paths. Traditionally, people use uh, OS to handle paths um, and navigating through folder structures. We did end up using OS because we could copy files easier, um, which we'll touch on a bit later. Um, but Pathlib really allows for uh, more advanced manipulation of file paths, and it's more concise uh, than OS. But OS uh, kind of you can get into more uh, system functions, but sometimes it can be clunky if if you're not careful how you're setting things up. But yeah, that's kind of an overview of the two backbones, I think, of our program because we're, we're, we're taking in files at, at paths on the system. So now I'll hand it over to Zach for part three. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about the copy anything uh, function, which comes from the shutil Python module that we found, we found it to be super useful. And then I'll talk about uh, how we implemented this on the command line. So if you look at this screenshot here, we created a function called copy anything with a source a folder and a destination folder. This basically copies an entire folder structure from one location to another, which can be a very powerful thing, but can also be very painful if you use it in the wrong way or if you accidentally copy something uh, with too much memory. Uh, so it's important to be careful with this, but we found it super useful uh, because it's it could easily allow you to back up folders or files uh, in case something goes wrong with your script, which is, you know, every programmer's worst nightmare. So basically, I just summed it up here. The It allows for high-level operations on files and folders, including copying and deletion. It's similar to the OS, but it's I think it's a little bit more high-level than that. Uh, however, it does have limitations. Uh, there are certain file attributes that it can't copy over, uh, which is more detailed in the Python module that, that if you type it into Google and uh, Python has a module, has a just like documentation for the module, they'll talk about it there. Uh, and then of course the copy tree function, which we used in the copy anything function that we defined, as I mentioned, copies an entire folder structure to a backup folder potentially, which is extremely useful 
when you're running a script that could that you know is directly editing files or creating files. This screenshot, I really wanted to showcase the uh, how we got it on command line and also mention the regex we used, uh, which was also extremely useful and powerful. So if you look at the uh, the first actual command uh, about the fourth line down, it says file name equals sys.argv with one in square brackets. That command basically allows you to run this script from a command line. So you basically use the file name as the script and then you pass it a, some sort of file as an argument and then this line catches that argument and then allows you to pass in an actual file to the script. So you don't have to manually name it in the script itself. Now, if you look at the line below that, there's uh, we created a regex object, basically. So Python has a module called RE, which is imported at the top of the screenshot, uh, that basically allows us to tap into the power of regex. Uh, so RE, in this case, you use it to return a list of strings, which catches from a file. And then those that list gets assigned into this object that we named regex1, for simplicity's sake. Uh, and what the cool thing is you can put the regex expressions, which you should hopefully be familiar with since you've taken Adam's cat classes at this point. Uh, in this, in, in Python, you just put R followed by two tick marks. And within those tick marks, you put your regular expression and it's highlighted green for convenience here. As I mentioned with the command line, you're basically able to run it from the command line with a file name or script name. And then the file name of the source document that you want to pull the strings from. You type that out, hit enter let it run, which is really the beauty of having a Python script. And the whole point of this is for extra automation. And of course, the regex, as I mentioned, you import the RE module, you create a regex object. Uh, and because it's built into Python like this in the RE module, you can easily use it to find all kinds of strings in a variety of file types, as long as they're text-based. Uh, which is super, super useful for the purposes of our script, which is trying to catch strings and then put them into uh, source documents for translation. Thank you, Zach. So now I'm going to talk about two other modules that we encountered that are really handy and we would like to share with you all. These two packages, are, uh, these two modules are called Beautiful Soup and Tickinter. So beautiful soup allow us to manipulate with strings within HTML files. It allows you to filter out text and stuff so that you can see the actual strings for easy reading. With Tickinter, we can incorporate some basic GUI for user readiness. And now I'm gonna sh show you with some actual screenshot. Here we have the actual program and as the arrow points out, the that part of the code allows the allows Python to read the actual HTML files, and the second arrow allows the use uh, the program to filter out the text. Next, I'm gonna show the HTML file we work with. Here is gonna here we're gonna use this as our sample to show you what the, how the program works. And uh, with the program, we're uh, with with the power of Beautiful Soup, we're actually able to convert the HTML file into a simple TXT file for visualization to help the user understand, oh, what am I actually going to be dealing with? And then we're going to be actually converting the file into the actual string.js file so that the translators can translate the strings and then the programmers can easily put the translation back into the HTML file. And if you don't know, like you, uh, you as a translator should put in the translation into the double quotation in it, to the corresponding strings. And with Tickinter, it allows us to incorporate some basic uh, GUI with the program. Tickinter, you will run the program and you will see the prompt on the top left. And then if you click on the button, it will, you will be able to select your files with the file explorer on the on the right. And now let's talk about what next for those who might be interested in taking over this project next year. So here are some suggestions we have right now. So first things first is that you can maybe come up with the solutions to reformat the strings within the HTML file with the underscore get text method using regex. Or you can also 
figure out a way to fine tune uh, the code we have right now because there's always room for improvement. And the next thing is that maybe develop a script to de detect internationalization errors. And then we'll, we'll talk about another suggestion we have. Yeah, so one of the coolest things you can uh, do, I think, with Python programs is that you it is possible to convert them into executables uh, to run portably on Windows. So let's say one of your colleagues doesn't have Python installed or uh, doesn't want to deal with code in any way. Uh, it is possible to bundle up your entire program uh, with the interpreter in there to uh, run your script. Um, this would be a great way to, again, get that into an EXE. And then from there, you could even add it to your right-click context menu uh, for even easier deployment across uh, your team. So those would be two interesting suggestions. And that's uh, all that we have today for you. Um, we're really happy that we got to share uh, some of what we accomplished here. And we're looking forward to hopefully hearing what those in the future decide to do with this project.